We'll go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to our very first week of Summer Faith at Home. Um, we're going to be reading a story from our Spark Bible every week, and then we'll also share highs and lows, and then we'll talk a little bit about the projects that we're doing that are um, from the kits that we got delivered to our houses. So um, we'll start with our story, and this one is Abraham and Sarah's Visitors, and we heard this in worship on Sunday. So lots of times um, we'll hear a story in worship on Sunday, and then we'll talk about it in our meeting on Thursday. Um, so we'll get a little bit of a preview if you join us for worship, and then um, we'll get kind of the kids' version from our Spark Bible each week. So this story goes, when Abraham was 99 years old, he and his wife, Sarai were still waiting for God's promise of a huge family to come true. Abram was getting frustrated. He asked God, what are you waiting for? God spoke to Abraham, I will keep my promise and I will change your name. Instead of Abram, your name will be Abraham. Instead of Sarai, your wife will be Sarah. Abraham was afraid of what God said. He thought he was too old to become the father of so many people, and his wife was too old to have children. He fell on his face and peeked up with one eye. Could God really make such a thing happen? Later, as Abraham was sitting by the tent, Abraham squinted into the sun and wondered who would be visiting him on such a hot day. Hi, Abraham said when they arrived. You must be tired from traveling. Would you like to sit down to rest and have some food? Quickly, Abraham asked Sarah to make some bread. He ordered his servant to prepare some meat. Sarah stood hiding in the tent, listening to the visitors. Who were they? Had they come to her house? And why were they talking about her? She leaned in a little closer. Your wife, Sarah, will have a son, the visitor said to Abraham. Sarah started to laugh. Didn't they know she was too old to have a child? The visitors looked up. Why is Sarah laughing, they asked. Doesn't she believe God's promise will happen? God's promise to Abraham did happen. Sarah had a baby boy and named him Isaac, which means laughter. Abraham and Sarah's family grew and grew and God blessed each generation with laughter and happiness. The end. So that's our story for the week. And we're talking all through this whole summer about the idea of being unraveled. Um, remember in our Kids in Christ time, we had all of that string that was unraveling in that yarn ball. And those are the kind of stories we're going to be talking about um, from the Bible all throughout the summer are different stories of people whose lives um, kind of become a little bit unraveled. Some kind of crazy things happen to them, and they have to see how God is at work in the midst of all of that unraveling. So, um, Elle, you should have gotten a big box that arrived at your house this week, and everybody else, too, if you're watching the recording, there should be a box with all kinds of supplies. And in that box should be a bag with a hoop and some scraps of fabric, oops, I lost my fabric scrap, some scraps of fabric, awesome. And what you're gonna be making by the time we're all done at the very end of the summer will look something like this. Um, it's kind of our weaving. And so what we're gonna do today is to do the gray um, strands and then we'll be adding the fabric strips in as we go. And we'll kind of just do one a week and take it nice and slow and be finished with this this way by the end of the summer. So if you want to do it right now, you totally can. If it's easier to just watch um, and do it on your own after the video, that is totally up to you. Um, but I'll get you started so that you can um, get started on your weaving this week. So you'll start with your empty hoop and you'll take those gray, light gray pieces of string. And you, perfect, you'll tie two knots, so a double knot on one end of the hoop, anywhere on the hoop. And then you'll tie the other end. We'll just tie it straight across, split the hoop right in half. 
And it's okay, um, you wanna get these kind of as tight as possible because they'll loosen up a little bit as you're weaving. So um, it's kind of tricky, but if you wanna get the knots on the very outside of the hoop and pull them nice and tight. And if they aren't quite um, tight enough, you can always go back through and untie and retie them a little bit. I had to do that um, when I was making my first one. All right, so our first strain on, you're gonna do this eight more times. Um, but I'll show you what it's going to look like when you're done with your eighth one so that we can skip ahead to the weaving part and you can keep doing the rest at home. So you'll do the same thing with a second gray string. Tie two knots onto the hoop and then go directly across and you'll tie two knots on the other side. And if you're watching the recording, this part at the very beginning is a really good part to have a grown up helping you. Because it'll help us get all set up for success. So then when we get to the weaving part, then that's where all of our kids can take over. All right, so we'll pretend that we did, that I did all eight already, that we have 16 knots all the way around the hoop. And so to start the weaving part, you're gonna take any two strains that are next to each other. It doesn't matter where they are in the circle. And you're gonna push them together so that they form one string. And then the other two ends will be split. And this is because we need an odd number of strings to weave around. When we have 16 with each of the eight strings, um, it won't work for us to go over and under and over and under. By the time we go once around our circle, we'll be back to the beginning and it won't turn out quite the way that we need it to. So we need an odd number. So if you put these two together, now all of a sudden you'll have 15 uh, gray knots all the way around the outside. And in order to keep these in place, you're gonna take your first strip of fabric and you're gonna tie it in a knot right around those two strips that you chose to squish together. That'll help keep them in place and you can move them together as close as you need to up here um, on your hoop. And if you have a lot of extra strings like this, you can leave them um, on for now, or you can cut them off a little bit closer to your knot. Um, not too close that they come undone, but close enough that they don't get in your way. I kept getting all tangled up as I was weaving. So once you have this knot with the fabric tied on, then this is when you're going to start with all of your 15 gray strands around. You're going to start in a circle and go over one gray string and under the next one over the next one and under the next one, over and under, over and under. You're gonna make a big spiral pattern as you're going around. And so you'll be letting out all of the string to go over and under, over and under, over and under until you get to the very end. And when you get to the end of your first strip of fabric, you'll just pick up your next one, whichever color you wanna do next. I decided I'd just do two blue in a row. And you're gonna take the end that is closest to your weaving and you're gonna tie it to your brand new piece of fabric. So you'll just tie it right to itself. You'll do one knot and then a double knot. And then you, now you have lots and lots of extra um, and you'll be able to keep going around and around. And every time you get to the end of a strip of fabric, then you'll take a new one and tie it right to that. Um, end and keep going. So I'll pull mine out at the very end and you can see a little bit what it will look like. Here we go. My knots are all tangled. All right, so when you have your very, very end of the fabric, this is what it's gonna look like as you're weaving. So once you get that first part started, the first piece of fabric is the hardest in that very middle, and you'll keep going around and around and around. Um, but when you get towards the end, it'll be a lot easier to see the over under pattern. So each of these gray strings, mine are a little bit darker than yours, this one went under, so this one goes over, under, over, 
under. And you'll keep going and going and going. And I like to just keep saying that to myself in my head, over and under, over and under. And you'll do the exact same pattern and that's what will help you get that giant spiral shape that you want. And you can keep switching colors as you go. Um, you should have gray and dark blue and light blue and maybe some white in your kit and you can switch to any colors that you want. So I switched every time um, to a different color, but you could do two of the same color in a row. You can totally make it your own unique design. Um, and there should be enough fabric that you can make your whole hoop um, full of all that fabric. So that's our project for this week. Um, and a couple other things I wanted to talk about. Um, you should also have another bag, Elle, that and everybody else on the recording that arrived with your um, delivery. And that bag is for you to use during worship. So that one has everything that you uh, might want in a busy bag that we would normally use when we're at church together. Um, so there's a candle in there that you can light before worship starts. Um, and there's all kinds of stuff that you can use uh, to have some fun during worship. Um, the stone in there is a peace stone and it's really smooth and it helps you remember to feel at peace. Um, and to know that God is with us when we're worshiping, even when we're worshiping at home. So that's another part of the delivery. And then everything else in your big Tupperware box, your Rubbermaid box, um, that we're going to be using throughout the summer. So keep everything in there. And then as we use it each week, um, once we've used something, you can take it out of the box. Like um, next week, we're going to be using bubbles. And once we use the bubbles on the video, then you can use them anytime you want after that to use the rest of. So keep all your supplies together for now. And then as we use them each week, um, they're yours to keep and you can play with them however you want. All right, so we're gonna finish up with our faith five. Um, and so if you're watching at home, I'll have you share highs and lows with each other. Um, something really, really good that happened today or this week, and then something maybe not so good that has been happening. And then after that, I'll have you share, um, we're talking all about unraveling and that idea of weaving. And I want you to share with each other something um, where has a time in your life when it's felt like something was unraveling, like things did not go according to the way that you planned them or things got a little bit messy and crazy. Um, and so share about that time together. Afterwards, you'll pray together and then you'll bless each other with the sign of the cross by marking that on your forehead. So I'll stop the recording now. And if you're watching the recording, you can um, get started and do all of those things at home. And if you're watching live, we'll start to share our highs and lows now.